friends sunday 8 pm indian standard time and we are back with our pro uh, program of virat hindustan sangam known as gyan ganga words of wisdom which you all know we beam at 8 pm across the globe for the benefit of our viewers who are following dr subramanian swami on the various social media channels today is our 128th episode and our discussion will be today on the indo us relations recent developments and we have today two guests <coughs> to discuss with dr swami one is sri ayer the author writer inventor who is behind the famous website known as p gurus and who has been an expert on various matters concerning india and the us we also have our own person who is always with our show that is ramesh swami who is based in uh, new jersey who is a it entrepreneur he along with sri ayer ramesh swami sri ayer and dr swami will be discussing this topic in the next one hour we have to thank my i have to thank my co-host professor arvind chaturvedi from delhi and also our technical team led by ashish shetty tejas naval gul from pune gadgi rakesh from karnataka ishwar ayer from navi mumbai swami nathan from chennai and vishal mehta from mumbai for their support to put this program together so with this opening remarks thanking our viewers across the globe and to tell our viewers we value your support our last sunday episode had crossed 6000 viewers so we thank you for your support so with these words it's over to dr subramanian swami for his introductory remarks on the topic and to guide the discussion forward thank you uh, okay um well um i need to uh, um begin by first fixing my uh um the screen uh this uh, visit of, of uh, modi is is a is a uh, what i would call as a um a touch uh, that uh, we think uh, will indicate to all of us the true state of our indo us relations uh now modi had a meeting with uh, uh, with uh, both the uh, president and the vice president and uh, he was not on an official visit of the united states he was on a visit to uh what we they call as the uh, uh united nations general assembly and therefore uh, we had a situation uh where uh, 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 we uh, had uh, a problem uh, with uh, uh, whether the um, um, prime minister should be received by the president or not and it may agonize for time and ultimately it was decided we will have an informal meeting of the uh, quad uh, the the original quad uh, of uh, four countries uh, united states india japan and australia uh and uh, that quad meeting uh, discussion i have some report of it uh, and i'll show you what uh, they discussed but it's quite clear from that that the discussion uh, was only on economic issues <clears throat> uh, there was a general reference to terrorism but there was no reference to either uh, what pakistan is doing or what uh, united uh, china is doing there's just no mention whatsoever which is a interesting thing because i have um, uh, downloaded uh, a a, uh, a uh, you know a news item which reads us uh, us sobered now holds talks with pakistan on priorities in afghanistan so while uh, this meeting is of um, modi was going on the secretary of state uh, blink uh, blinken he was meeting the pakistanis to discuss how to proceed further on afghanistan which means that uh, pakistan is no more a um, outcast uh, for the americans uh, for having sided with taliban and in fact uh, they are thinking of using pakistan 
uh, to deal with the Taliban in Afghanistan. So now that's bad news for India to begin with. And it happened while uh, Modi was in um, uh, in uh, uh, while Modi was in, uh, in in Washington. The second thing I would uh, like to say is that uh, the Washington Post, which is a Washington based newspaper, has uh, an article by a person who has been a long critic of Modi. And it's a very hostile uh, piece, uh, prominently displayed. And so did the New York Times. So the media has, uh, first of all, not covered it at all. Uh, here uh, there were, you know, 24 hours uh, of, of what was happening. But in the United States, uh, no TV to my knowledge. I and mean, we have got two people who are resident in the United States, uh, uh, great patriots, as well as uh, with the uh, VHS. Uh, one is, uh, uh, of course, a regular um, anchor, um, and Ramesh. And the other is uh, Sri Ayer, who's uh, become famous because of his own uh, programs. And uh, both will tell us exactly what the atmosphere was compared to say when he uh, Modi came at the time of uh, Trump. So uh, I'll begin by first uh, posing a question uh, to the two uh, experts here who are from the uh, presently resident in the United States. Was uh, Modi's trip worth it? I'm not talking about the UN just now. Uh, I'm talking, asking you whether for all this hype and so on, in the end, uh, do you think um, uh, that this trip uh, was worth uh, taking and, and making so much effort to hold it. No, so that's question number one. Question number two is that now that uh, even uh, while all this was going on, the uh, Quad that we originally became member of to deal with China, and in fact the first uh, statement made when we joined it was that it will. Uh, kind of will uh, uh, you know block China? Had this quad meeting has been preceded by a one-to-one -one long meeting with uh, Xi Jinping of uh, Mr. Biden, and after that I see no reference in anything either by India or joint in a joint uh, statement, or whatever any reference to China or to Pakistan. And Pakistan, I've already shown you that now the Americans being practical people, uh, they have decided that, you know, there's only one way to deal with Afghanistan and that is through Pakistan. And that's bad, bad, bad news for India. According to me, I'd like uh, the two of them to respond to that. Uh, now, the third thing is, um, on the economic side, do we have a most favored nation's uh, uh, status? When China opened out to the United States in 1972, it rapidly became a most favored nation, which means tremendous concessions on what you can export and uh, the lower rates of tariff and all that. And we don't haven't had it. So is, is, is there's no mention of MFA in anything except that we must increase trade with India and all that. So what is the, even if the uh, quad is downgraded to economic issues, and from what I can see from the statement made by the United States, uh, they're saying that uh, the quad will be very effective in the question of <clears throat> climate and the question of uh, uh, vaccines. Now, <laughs> To say that this whole effort is only for that, that sounds as a huge downgrade. Fourth question, I want you to speculate because I believe now it's certain from my sources in the Indian government that November uh, S-400 will arrive. I was only yesterday night uh, in a dinner told by someone who knows about America, American establishment, uh, that uh, the uh, sanction uh, documents have for India have been prepared and are kept in, in the State Department to be announced immediately after the S-400 uh, arrives. 
they didn't spare uh, Turkey, they are not going to spare us also, I am told. Now, that would be a major, major serious uh, thing. Now, uh, when I ask this question, then how can the relations with India and the United States continue? So they say, well, you are having uh, the Chinese have occupied your territory, but you are continuing to meet them. So well, I don't see why we, you should have any difficulty meeting us. <laughs> That's another insult. And I would like to know from the American-based Indian expert, uh, what do you think will happen if uh, S-400? Uh, is uh, finally arrives in India. And finally, long years ago, 2008, uh, I had held a conference in Cochin uh, of uh, Harvard University, Tsinghua University from China. And uh, in Kerala, there is a school for management studies. Uh, uh, so the three of us in the school for management studies, we had a two day conference. Where topmost experts of their country, professors uh, from these two top universities, Xi Jinping himself, himself went to Tsinghua University. So they came and the uh, advisor to Xi Jinping uh, now, uh, Yuan Shetong, professor of political science in uh, Tsinghua, he was also there. That time there was serious talk by Chinese delegation of a triangular relationship emerging in the world of India, China, and the United States. Today, I find India nowhere being discussed, despite so many years having passed, I mean, almost 14, 15 years since that conference, when it was an obvious thing and it was being proposed. So I would like to know whether India has been now gradually reduced to a regional power and that too a ineffective regional power. I mean, has the Indian status been going steadily down? I'm not mentioning which tenure alone because I'm saying it has been a long decline. And uh, so why? And do we, should we aspire to be part of the global triangle of India, United States and China? Or we should say this is a duality uh, a dual uh, um, uh, uh, dual game of between the United States and China, and we are just uh, one of the watchers on. So over to uh, to begin with. Um, uh, I'd love to start with uh, Priya here because he is truly the guest. Because uh, Ramesh is one of us. Just in Hindi, they say "ghar ka muli," and uh, so he will get second preference. So over to you, Priya here. Please let us know. Although your background is Pakka Tamil, but still, and your dress is Pakka Tamil, but we know you're living in America. So please tell us the American point of view of, or how it is being perceived in the United States, according to you, this visit of, uh, of Modi and the Indo-US um, you know, uh, relationship. How is it regarded? How seriously, how respectfully it is regarded? Over to you. Um, <clears throat> Thank you very much, Dr. Swami, and a warm welcome to all our uh, uh, viewers uh, who are from VHS and various other organizations. It's been an honor and pleasure always to be on your channel, sir, to discuss things the way I see it and uh, how, you know, the strip of Modi is playing out. Um, the first question that you asked was, uh, was it worth it? Uh, Dr. Swami, whenever you come with one purpose and you work on something else, then the pressure on you to deliver on the something else is much less. So therefore, I would say it is worth it. But having said all that, what is the importance of those five CEOs that uh, Mr. Modi met? There were four who had technology or technology oriented. One was in solar, one was in drones, one was in software. And, and the fourth one, I forget what it was. It is not very important. The fifth one is perhaps the most significant, which was, I think, BlackRock, Schwarzman who is one of the biggest VC firms. Uh, so Modi must have told him, look, we are, uh, you know, we are open for business. We would like you to invest. And, and uh, that may be one uh, key thing that could be, you know, useful in the, down, uh, in the long run where these uh, VCs decide that, yes, India is a desirable destination. Certainly, sir, there was a Goldman Sachs report 
which said that the looking at the new startup ecosystems that are coming up in India, they expect about 200 or 250 in about five years time. And the combined valuation of these, that is the, the startups and the, the valuation expected to be around five trillion dollars valuation not actual output they do two different things <laughs> these valuations can be yeah, 20x 30x sometimes yeah. so, so not, not so, gdp to, but assets yeah yes it is not at all not at all so it, it, that's a good thing uh, because if these startups actually grow in india and don't get sold out to some other company and the founders cash out in which case nobody actually benefit but if it grows in india organically then it has the potential to give uh, 10x up to 10x because these are high paying jobs that create yeah. the other uh, opportunities for services and so on and so forth so yeah. that was i think to me was an important meeting and uh, the pledge i'm hearing and i i'll have to look at the real numbers is uh, upwards of uh, 50 billion dollars that's a big number but that's like one tenth of what we have but that is over how many years and, and for what metrics they are going to look for so that they know that India is delivering. Because last I checked, Dr. Swami, in the budget, the finance minister announced that a single person, foreign person, such as myself, can start a company in India. And I'm still looking for the rules because I'd like to test pilot this. I'd like okay. to test pilot this to see if I'm able sure. to do that. And, and I haven't really gotten hold of it. I know many people from the PMO and other places watch it. Please send it to me. Uh, you know how to reach me. If not, it is S as in Sam, I as in Iyer at pgurus.com. You can send me an email. I'd appreciate it because I want to try and test this thing out. So anyway, having said that, these are all little things because the action on the ground is what is important. The, the other thing that he did, which is to say that he's going to bring back 157 idols. Um, that is a welcome step. However, I must say two years ago also, I heard the same thing. And, and maybe now they are ready to be exported back to India. Sir, uh, in my opinion, this is just the beginning because all these 157 idols or murtis, we should say I, murtis, not idols, murtis have to be re uh, out back in the same temple that used yeah. to be there. And, That's the the Kumbhabhi yeah. Shekham, and the Kumbhabhi Shekham has to be done and, and based on not uh, a particular political leader's uh, birthday or something, nakshatra or something, <laughs> but on the nakshatra of the temple of the deity and the person who is going to be performing the Kumbhabhishekam. We have the a great leader in Tamil Nadu who on that person's birthday wanted Kumbhabhishekam done in 108 temples. This is all like, you know, total disregard for what is Agama Shastras and what the Shastras say. Anyway, uh, they didn't help that person, didn't live to be too long. Anyway, that is point. Uh, so the, 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 the golden opportunity, in my opinion, Dr. Swami, is for the uh, BJP government, especially in Tamil Nadu and perhaps in Kerala, to start really working with somebody local. I don't want the, the lumpens that we call as HR and CEs of uh, these states to come in the way. They are not coming in the way. And I, I, I would like somebody like VHS uh, take up the thing saying that under the aegis of VHS, we are going to start finding the funds, finding the way to try and get these Kumbhabi Shekams done. Because VHS is a non-political organization. If you put your name behind it, Dr. Swami, the lumpens will stay away. The rowdies who are earlier, they need to stay away. They are, you are not wanted. The people of the villages will take care of these new temples. Such a great thing, sir. For 15 years, the, the murti goes missing. It comes back. It is like the whole temple becomes alive. The village becomes alive. Anyway, they, I'm just getting a little uh, ahead of myself here. But this is the, the work is beginning now. This can be done. It should be done. And, and if it is done, it would also be one of the sure signs of renaissance that the Indian government is determined to get back what it lost. And, and it would have been nicer for the PM to have stopped over perhaps at uh, you know a certain uh, store in Italy and pick up the artifacts lying around. <laughs> <laughs> the, the alleged owner is the sister of a person whose name we shall not mention. The shop, <laughs> the shop names are things like Ethnica, Ganesha, and so on. Oh. <laughs> See, it gets more interesting, Dr. Swami. What is also interesting is the person who helped in this endeavor to smuggle the antiques, a uh, Mr. Muthu Swami Varadarajan. He yes. was the late cultural secretary of India. He was also the chela of Indra's trusted aide, Pupul Jaikar. Yes. 
and 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 guess who's uh, uh, guess what his son is up to these days he's running a website in india total vitriol against modi it would have been a great payback for modi <laughs> to the said ex cultural secretary's us born son <laughs> but then yes, he is he is also a us citizen <laughs> yes he is also a us citizen that's why right, he's a us born son so <laughs> it it would have been poetic justice in my opinion but i guess we can only hope but one word of uh, mention here this whole thing was the work of india pride project initiative by anurag saxena and vijay kumar these were the yeah. guys who did the hard yards they yeah, took the pictures of they took the pictures from various publications about 100 years old and then compared the murti pictures with those in the museum somebody was actually going to these museums paying money from their own pocket going to this particular spec exhibit finding out that oh yes this is the same thing and then submitting the evidence to the museums in the united That's states right. saying that this is actually been stolen from this temple yeah. here is the proof yeah. Yeah. and and that is how all these things got aggregated and they were lying in a customs warehouse i believe in new york and they have been lying there for many years it's not like it was yesterday or today it has been there for some years now but i'm glad that it is being brought back but i don't want these things to be brought back and put another in another warehouse in delhi and then suddenly somebody found the route directly from that <laughs> museum to the seaport and then again they go back and find themselves in uh, <laughs> Sotheby's or Christie's, and this is entirely happening in India because the original guy, who's the the the, the lumpen who did all this smuggling, his name is Kapoor, and and, and a nasty character, yes. and in India has a great way of letting go of all the criminals, but they will catch the injured the 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 officer who caught did the actual work, and they'll dismiss that person. I'm going to stick it in because I am so upset with this kind of uh, babudam that you know uh, over. Um, they are yeah. out to cover their backs anyway long long story short let's get back to um the um the trip yes i think it was worth it provided like i'm putting a lot of provisos here that these things there should be some transparency that these idols are being stored here that there is a plan that you know these temples are going to be for that they need help and i'm sure through vhs we can do that help temple worshipper society mr t r ramesh is an authority on agam agamas and he would be happy to help out saying that okay this murti this should be the thing this is the nakshatra this is the thing this is what we will do it and we will invite mr modi but modi ji can come and participate in this kumbha abhishek we have no problem the thing has to be done right it should not be done in a way that it looks like you know it's a publicity exercise it is not this is the renaissance that we need to do that's why i'm wearing this sir and that's why i have a gopuram in the backdrop because it is my fond hope that we complete this thing we are just begun so anyway that is one the other thing you uh, asked about is india's uh, uh, what is happening in india's role in afghanistan why it is being shunned sir Pakistan just essentially, particularly on the Indo-U.S. relations, have they improved? Have they are still the same, or they have deteriorated? Um, I I'm not sure it deteriorated, Doctor Swami. I think remember that Blinken was on a trip. He came to India. That was a very good trip. A lot of things got agreed upon. But you see, India is uh, you know they they say something, but they don't follow up. i think that is the reason why the united states is perhaps saying you know uh, marketing is great but execution not so much and and we have seen this in many many instances in fact we had a hangout on pigurus you and i sir where we talked about what happened in 2003 when adwani came promised feet on the boots on the ground in, yeah. in iraq only for the prime minister to say the exact opposite on the floor of the parliament so these kinds of things where somebody says oh if i allow this this person is going to become more famous and then therefore i will not allow i'm not saying that's what happened in in that case but i'm i'm free to think whatever i want to think and that's how i think anyway so but the, 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 so this this trust factor is the problem i think that is there and for that they need somebody who says what he does and does what he says and and i believe the jury is out on that as far as the modi government is concerned in terms of acting on promises like for example in the 2015 trip he promised their good robust bankruptcy court bill what came was watered down yeah. and people are misusing that now 
to do something else. You see, this is where the problem is. You can't have a, 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 a complex document like that given to some section officers or some uh, people lower level and said, okay, write the rules for this. And then it starts, you know, the Babudam starts initialing one, 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 and then it goes to the minister and he signs it. Somebody has to get their heads and wrap this around. After all, the IAS exam is very competitive. People are brainy. Why aren't you applying your brains? You're doing it to do get, get other things. Why can't you apply your brains to getting doing something good for India? I'm doing this on my time and my dime. Dr. Swami is doing it on his time and his dime. We're not getting any paid for this. In fact, if anything, there's a lump and group sitting there just to try and poke holes on this uh, video <laughs> and they'll start criticizing us. So yeah, yeah, the thing is, if you're not going to deter, get deterred, you know, Churchill once said, if you stop to throw stones at every dog that comes in your way, you'll never reach your destination. So that is the whole point. I mean, we are going to path this down. We are going forward. So uh, in Afghanistan, Dr. Swami, if you remember, you, I, um, the Professor Nala Pat, and a few of us said that it is essential that India put some feet on the ground. We understand this culture. They are part of us. They know what it is. India enjoys a lot of goodwill. Yeah. And, and many times this gets promised in the DC, in DC, and then the, 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 the thing starts tapering down once it comes to, I would like uh, Prime, Prime Minister Modi to refute what I'm saying right now, that he, he agreed to put boots on ground in Afghanistan only to come back and change his mind later when he landed in India. Please tell me you didn't do this thing, Prime Minister Modi. <laughs> because these are all the problems. You created this problem. If you had a problem committing, then you should have not committed there. You should have said, I have to go and think about this. What is in it for me? Do it like when, a businessman. When and where did he commit? No. See, these are all talks that people are keep saying that. You know, ah, only talk, whatever you heard. In Obama, as well as in Trump, they are saying that, you know, there, there was a commitment. See, otherwise, why would General McMaster's come all the way only to yeah. talk about this, only to be rebuffed by a, a defense minister who's still, you know, finding her, her feet on the ground as far as defense ministry is concerned. So they, 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 these are all basically what it is, is, you know, some optic, oh, somebody came and met. This optics zamana has gone. We want actual actionable work. These days, things are moving so fast. Who would have thought in a year ago that, uh, you know, uh, this kind of new um, relationships would form and that, uh, you know, or, or in, in plain sight, a country walks over another country and the whole world is just watching, doing nothing. Not only that, they they, they abandon the, the most state-of-the-art uh, airbase, which could have been an easy listening post for America across the whole Middle East and uh, Southeast, and they've just abandoned it. So they, they, what Mr. Biden has a problem. He has not been able to explain how and why they exited Afghanistan. And, and But that is going to still play out. You see, what happens is the media here is completely completely like in India, sir, they are not really promising or showing the truth. For example, there was a report. Anyway, let's, let's talk about it later. Sorry. Let's get back to Afghanistan. So I think this is as much uh, India's making that India couldn't deliver on some of the promises in terms of what they said they will do. And, and that is probably why America feels like these guys don't really mean what they say. If that mindset has taken root, then I, I think only action on ground will turn this thing around. And I don't know when that is going to happen. As far as Quad is concerned, you said you, you're absolutely right, Dr. Swami, in that Quad has now become more of an optics thing. Um, they don't really... See, US has formed so many Quads. On Afghanistan, it has a Quad. On, on something yeah. else, it has it, it has a Quad. And in, uh, in, in Afghanistan, they've included Pakistan, China, Russia, and themselves. Yeah. <laughs> and, and they don't think India has a role to play. And I will honestly ask you, sir, what role does India have to play? What did India do when their consulates were ransacked? You think that Afghan Taliban knew what to look for? No, it was ISI which was doing that. They probably, ISI guys are wearing all those Afghan dresses and going in and looking. So this, is, this is robbing. And what did India do? Did India even register a protest? That you are not supposed to, this is territory of India, even if the Indian um, uh, officials had vacated the place, that place is still having a board saying that this is the consulate of India in any of those uh, different cities. I would interpret that if it goes to International Court of Justice, that this is actually India's territory. Is not is that my, is my understanding wrong, Dr. Swami? Yeah, embassy is the territory of the country. Yeah, so somebody, Ghuzbait, did they, they did Ghuzbait. I'm trying yeah, to tell you the right. language. My you know, Indian sovereignty, yeah. Yes, yes. Right. And and what did India do? 
So these, these, these are things that are important. So I'm sure the world watches. Just because Indians don't say anything, India's media doesn't say anything, doesn't mean that the world is not watching. The world is not as dumb as it looks. Yeah, it does do dumb things here and there. But the point here is, I think India brought this upon themselves. And, and I don't know when this mindset is going to change. Certainly, there is there is a lot that needs to be introspecting, in, introspected by the team that comprises of uh, you know, Jay Shankarji and Prime Minister Modi and whoever else is involved in the foreign policy of India. That needs to really introspect. So what does, what does it mean that if India is out of Quad, they're basically just using Quad to export vaccines what does that mean for india yes india can continue to export but you see it's it's not something where india has access to all the raw materials they are called as a, it's an acronym it doesn't matter so india can india deliver 8 million can india deliver 1 billion uh, uh, next year i i i mean it is possible it depends upon what kind of a supply chain they have so let us start somewhere if, if vaccine diplomacy is going to succeed for india that is fine because this uh, this pandemic is not going away and we know now that the chinese vaccines the two versions that they have come out with they're not that effective so china now has a genie that has let out of the bottle doesn't matter if it was by accident or whatever and that genie is not going back in and and we don't know what kind of state of affairs are going to prevail two three four years from now certainly if india has good vaccine capability they should definitely leverage that and try and get back into you know position of prominence and as far as the the s400 again you and i we've talked about this a long time that there could be ramifications and uh, if if there is uh, you know sanctions placed on india i am i'm afraid that is going to have a fairly um, negative effect on india's economy because what will happen is many companies also might start uh, yeah. you know looking yeah. elsewhere for uh, yeah. uh, for the resources uh, there are there are many countries now who are who can offer same or better uh, performance than india dr swami it's not india is no longer the best it provider even for the low level jobs india is no longer the best there are other people who can do even better yeah. than or the same so that is where the problem is i think i've said enough so I let uh, uh, Ramesh ji weigh in on what he thinks yeah. about what happened. All right, Ramesh, it's all yours. Okay, thank you, thank you, Sri. It was, it was uh, I mean, I, I, it was busy writing down all your points so that I can, <laughs> I can fill in the gaps wherever you had uh, left out. But okay, uh, so Dr. Swami, just coming back to your questions, you had four questions. One was the visit worth it, and uh, it begs you because you said leave the UN part of it out of the equation. If you say yeah. that's if excluded. Then there's nothing there so what was the visit for to dc i mean the quad was it looks more to me like it's been shoehorned into this visit so you know you have to do something so let's just create something it appeared to be that um, there are reasons as to why i feel that that is the that, that conclusion where i've come to is first when when uh, when the prime minister went to dc uh, the reception that he got was kind of weird i mean it was kind of out of protocol a lot of the things because uh, he goes to meet the VP first. So it kind of felt completely out of place for, for our stature from a prime minister's perspective. You don't go into the main. I mean, obviously, I understand it's not a state visit. So you're not you don't have the state. I mean, you know, full state honors to I mean, you don't have the guards, whatnot. Um, but the visit itself was very strange and kind of, you know, hodgepodgely put together. That's the that's what from a perspective and we see it outside. That's what it looks. During the visit, there was not much coverage in the media. I'm just saying upon mainstream American media, there's not much coverage for any of those visits that basically the squad didn't get that much traction. What took traction was the way this whole thing went about. I mean, one, I felt that the Vice President Kamala Harris kind of schooled Dr. Modi on democracy and all those things. I That, it felt a little bit out of place again. And yeah, I really don't understand why that happened first why the prime minister would go and meet the vp instead of the other way around so that's kind of an odd visit at the end of the day uh, the quad meeting if we look at it seriously if it for what it's worth which i again it's more as i said it's more of a facade rather than a real quad meeting because this had to be an isolated one if you're having a very serious quad meeting in my opinion the squad meeting should have been an isolated specific event be it in camp david somewhere like that you know it's, it needs to have a lot of significance and push behind it it's appeared to be you know, shoehorned it. Uh, the outcome seems to be very promising. Whatever they've said in the statement, a lot of opportunities. We covered a lot of those things. It has a lot of 
opportunities areas for India. I think if I take it positively, let's assume for a second that whatever the statement, joint statement and the uh, FAQ that has been put through it, if you look at it, there are two key areas that I think India has a huge opportunity on, two or three key areas. I'll just highlight them. One was basically pharmaceuticals. Uh, but number two is going to be cybersecurity. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you why the, all this, these three are combined. And basically, infrastructure slash transportation. If you look at all these three, uh, the, the last two uh, is very crucial because it's all targeting China, essentially. I mean, to some extent, saying that cybersecurity, if you look at it, there are two people who are not borders who are constantly hacking not only in Indian infrastructure, but across the globe, be it China or Pakistan. I mean, they have known to do this cybersecurity. There have been threats to across the globe, number one. Number two, be it transportation, what we call is other security, like um, if you look at, you've talked about Malacca Strait. If we take the Quad seriously, India needs to push for this. I mean, India has been given an opportunity. Instead of just going and meeting and doing things, I think India should look at it as an opportunity to build on top of this. I'm not talking about a transaction level, build up 10 more IT hubs, build some more semiconductor fabs. Those are all very transactional in nature. In strategic standpoint, India should take this seriously and look at these two entities, China and India as a pocket, and then say, okay, how do we take these objectives and do it? I don't think India is committed to that because as Sri said, there is no commitment. It's just a lot of talk, marketing, but there is no commitment. It was very obvious, as Sri said, and you've been saying all along, is India's absolute lack of commitment to Afghanistan. Now we have a problem. Instead of us going and taking them, Taliban, who's going to be the bedrock for additional terrorism that's going to be pushed into India through POK. We should have fought them there. Now we're going to allow that serpent, that hydra to come inside the, the country and create more chaos for us in the long run. That's exactly what you predicted. And it's absolutely going to happen. There was no serious mention of how are we going to handle Afghanistan in the meeting, even though it was like just for the sake of it being mentioned. So from that angle, the visit was it basically was not worth it from my angle. The UN part of it, well, UNGA, uh, 50 people attended the the uh, the video. I mean, unfortunately, uh, I don't know why, because probably COVID. But uh, when you look at the crowd, there's nobody else. It's basically the Indian delegation and a few other delegations, maybe friendly countries. But it was a pretty low. The, the speech that he gave was excellent. He had, he had hit all the nails. I mean, but at the end of the day, reception wise, we just need to look at it and what how effective it's going to be. Second, dealing with China, as you said, Probably there was a talk between Biden and China before the Quad meeting, very tepid. Absolutely no mention of China and what's going to happen, how are we going to do. And as much that even in the speech, uh, I I hoped that the Prime Minister had taken the name of China and Pakistan in his speech, yeah. not there. It's very crucial because you have a stage, it's a global stage. Once in a, I wouldn't say once in a like a very rare opportunity. Why don't you just, you have the biggest loudspeaker. Why would you fail to use that opportunity? So that is, it's really baffling to me saying that why would you miss the opportunity to mention two big aggressors, basically Pakistan and China, in that speech, which is, which is fascinating to me. S-400, Dr. Swami, I agree with you. The reason why this entire visit was very kind of cold, it, I don't think it was a warm visit, like what Trump, when it happened with Trump, I mean, it was because that was a dedicated state visit, the amount of promises made, Again, the challenge, as Sri said, is we make India makes a lot of promises and never delivers. I mean, sometimes it happens in, in business as well, but we need to stop doing that and commit to ourselves saying that, okay, let's just promise what we can we can do. Not just keep on saying just for the world of it, okay, I need, uh, you know, I have some ambitions, I'm going to get this award or that award or reward. Just focus on what needs to get done. I think there'll be a much better. And as Sri said, technically, we're not going to, we're not lasting too long. I mean, the low end uh, IT jobs, even in the high end, moving away to uh, to Ukraine and that area these days. And nobody is going to seriously looking at India as a destination because it's getting more problematic to, to do business because it's just, uh, again, the same challenges that every other IT company has. People are shedding jobs like crazy. So it is very difficult. India has a lot of thing to prove. It has the wherewithal, as you said, we have the great workforce to do that, but we're not consistently never, ever delivered and what we promised. And again, if I look at the positive side, I think the, the if I look at the mention, what's mentioned in Quad, India can take it. I really wish Prime, uh, the, uh, the Prime Minister makes uh, Gatkari the lead because they, they take, talk about uh, green hydrogen, which you have been saying all along as one of the most important things. 
I think infrastructure is very key, be it on the energy side or on the real infrastructure side. I think there is a lot of things that we could do, but uh, I, I'll just hold back. I'm not sure if that's going to get done. Um, I think in Afghanistan, opportunity lost severely. The last point I want to mention was about the temple idols. I mean, I should, we should definitely thank, um, you know, Vijay Kumar, Poetry in Stone. That guy single-handedly has done so much of work for following up with the U.S. customs here to make sure that, uh, you know, these idols are some of the other, as uh, Sri Mitch and Kapoor, he was the big uh, crook in this. I mean, he was in his warehouse in New York City. He has been diligent behind the scenes, never even come in the front saying that, you know, I'm doing this, but purely altruistic. So a lot of kudos to Vijay Kumar, who is based in Singapore. Thank you, Dr. Swami. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> let me first go to my colleagues and get their opinion. And then perhaps uh, I'll um, um, give you another um, uh, uh, presentation uh, based on what you have said in in concise way for the audience. Uh, so first, shall I start with uh, Arvind uh, Jagdish or shall you yeah. want to do it first? Okay, uh, Arvind. Thank you, uh, Dr. Swami, for giving me an opportunity over and above after C.C. Ayer and uh, Ramesh has spoken. A lot of uh, issues have been covered, but when we are discussing the Indo-U.S. relationship's impact on them after the visit of uh, Prime Minister Modi, we have to look at it from four points. First is Quad. Second is the United Nations meeting. Third is the one-to-one -one meeting between Modi and Biden. And fourth is whether there any joint statement issued by India and US. Yeah. About the Quad, a lot of things Ramesh said. Ramesh uh, uh, was very, very positive. And in fact, I share uh, things with him because uh, Quad is not geopolitics. Quad is for specific issues. And if we recall, even in the VHS uh, Words of Wisdom program, once we were discussing Quad, at that time also I said, don't expect Quad to be political. Vaccination, COVID, of course, is specific. Environment, cyber security, 5G, technology, clean hydrogen fuel, uh, solar energy, all those issues and all those issues were discussed. And these are issues in which India has huge interest as far as developing India is concerned. So for the 22nd century, we need U.S. help, we need Japan's help, we need Australia's help in all these areas, wherever possible. From that point of view, I share what Ramesh is saying, that Quad is successful. In fact, I differ with the Sri uh, 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 term used. He said Quad is all optics. No, it is not. If you expect Quad to discuss Afghanistan, if you expect Quad to discuss China, I think, no, we are uh, having too much uh, expectation. Quad is not meant for <laughs> What is not meant for that? Uh, one is that. Second is, as far as the United Nations meeting is concerned, Ramesh made two very important uh, points. One is that Modi missed an opportunity of not mentioning Afghanistan by name and uh, Pakistan by name, not mentioning Afghanistan and China. In fact, what Modi did not mention, our first secretary in the United Nations, Sneha Dubey, yeah. did which was official statement. So whether it's said by Modi or whether it's said by Indian representative in the official channel of the United Nations, I think Sneha Dubey communicated the India's official version and she said everything what Ramesh was expecting to be said about Pakistan. She smashed uh, Imran Khan statement and she smashed uh, all the lies which Pakistan has been teaching out. So therefore, uh, the United Nations was also a positive outcome. Third was one-to-one -one meeting with uh, Biden and uh, Kamala Harris. Uh, maybe the priority whether Kamala Harris should have been first or President Biden should have been first, uh, uh, since it was not an official visit. So uh, it doesn't really matter. And what matters most is the final outcome. And final outcome is the joint statement. Joint statement says all those things which India is expecting at this point in time. Now, look at the background. What was the background? Background was we had a, a, a vice presidential candidate in the United States called Kamala Harris, who had taken a negative stand on Kashmir. 
who had taken a negative statement of indo pakistan relations that was the background background was we had invited donald trump in a uh, uh, amtabad we had uh, organized namaste trump and our prime minister said ab ki baar trump sarkar with that background what do you expect united states to uh, uh, say about india so ice was to be broken ice has been broken so we take it even if it was not official visit of prime minister modi it was a ice breaking visit and the ice has been broken of course with the united states and india if we look at the historical uh, uh, relationship between india india and us it has always been blow hot blow cold one step forward one step backward from the united states side and i'm saying this with three experts on united states politics sitting with me uh, dr swami shri ayer and uh, ramesh swami look at what happened in last uh, uh, visit uh, last two days negative positive negative positive negative positive no official invitation it was not official visit therefore prime minister modi was not given the official status negative great favor by united nations to modi because no questions were asked about his vaccination united states allowed prime minister modi to move in with co vaccine which is not even recognized by who level 1 us negative he lectured mr modi on adopting gandhism he said india should you learn uh, from gandhi of course india has been using practicing gandhi day in and day out who is uh, uh, president biden to lecture india negative positive and when uh, 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 nobody received him at the entrance of the, uh, the white house well ramesh mentioned this negative but when president biden met prime minister modi he almost hugged him almost i'm saying because of the covid protocol uh, the obama type hugging or trump type hugging was not really uh, in thing so uh, positive negative and no major coverage in us media us media never takes the visits of prime ministers most of the prime ministers in last 10 years or 15 years uh, who have visited uh, i accept uh, one visit by uh, manmohan singh and one visit by uh, atal bihari bashpai which had some kind of uh, coverage and in us media us media has also changed over a period of time therefore we should not have expected uh, coverage in the media and overall looking at all these things i think the results are positive and uh, we should be hopeful of a better relationship as compared to february march 21 now we should expect a better february march 20 in fact not 21 february march 20 when namaste trump was organized as compared to last in last 18 months uh, this visit would certainly cement uh, this uh, friendship and uh, maybe india can look up to a better relationship this is what i think jagdish now <clears throat> my uh, question or observation is what has india really gained in terms of all this certain things uh, we can do it a video conference certain things we went there we say state visit not a state visit joint statement no joint statement but the sum total is has india gained at all or is there anything going to happen after the delivery of these uh, aircraft from russia so all those factors will have to be taken into consideration the response in the united nations i'm sorry to say being an indian and i am a feeling a little shy but the pictures which has been put out by the united nation official agencies show a very <laughs> dismal picture of uh, the audience of the world leaders in the united nations watching modi in fact it's a very poor picture so i don't know in what terms so if really the idea was you have to use that platform there are various ways of making use of the platform so still as a common indian i am still lost to find out whether this visit was worth visit have we gained or not gained i am really confused because there are different spins being done from different angles in fact 
today there is a video spread by the andbugs and gandbugs of modi's previous uh, lecture in the uh, united states organization meeting a meeting or maybe the, the senate or the congress uh, they have put out that video today saying that this is the modi's uh, speech in uh, us showing <laughs> comparing it to the united nations speech in fact many senior people asked me whether this is the relevant speech i said no the relevant speech is available on the website and you can see that it is i got good, about 200 viewerships or uh, 2 lakh viewership already so i am really, really confused of all this whether it has been of any positive or where there are many things in the pipeline because like previous visits we will be told when the visits happen that it's very very uh, big visit but afterwards when things start uh, coming out we realize the repercussions now whether modi did a mistake by coming doing namaste trump in india that's all for the future foreign ministry fs to judge whether they should have gone too close to the presidents in power or may have maintained a distance all those factors because when they become a big hit it's considered even uh, if you see kamla harris's tweet the tweet about her meeting with mr modi was given so low priority she tweeted it after many hours after having met some other world leaders so if you see from that angle we have to see it from all the angle so as a common man i am really confused whether this visit was worth visiting to the us at all and whether india has gained in any way or whether this could have even been done on a uh, uh, in the virtual mode modi addressing the united nations so this is just my initial comments on this issue i would like others to react to it well um uh, anybody wants to react to what he says a uh, cu- couple of things and uh, and, 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 uh, and arvind also you can react to both yeah uh, a couple of things that i wanted to say straight um arvind ji uh, see it was not just uh, prime minister modi who was visiting uh, a vice president the vice president uh, even the prime minister of united kingdom boris johnson visited her and so did the canadian prime minister so in some ways i don't know why Zamb- zambia happened. also by the zambia, zambia too president of zambia also visited so these are all the ones that she tweeted about we don't know how many more people visited so i don't know why this is happening but i know a little bit of other things happening in the white house so i don't want to say anything on this channel here uh, because it may not be related but it also gives you a hint into how the future of the us politics is going to be in my opinion so let's let's let it, let it uh, stay there for that um in terms of you know uh, arvind ji saying that uh, quad is optics and nothing else i mean saying that it is not true we'll have to wait and see arvind ji who you know how this thing plays out because quad had a purpose and a reason when trump was still the president um if you i don't know if you remember the then secretary of state mike pompeo came to delhi and he was aghast that india was not taking the name of china he's saying i am taking the name of china you are not what is wrong with you guys why are you not doing it and for that he was rewarded right now he is banned in china mike yeah. pompeo is a persona non grata in china yes So, so it takes guts to say some of these things. I mean, he's paying probably a heavy price for that because we don't know if that would weigh in on his presidential ambitions. We have to wait and see. But the point here is, Mike Pompeo, he was the director of CIA before that. The man really, really said what he thought. And and now, you know, why can't the Indian leaders mention it? Uh, Arvind ji, I'm sorry. The official statement may have panned uh, uh, Imran Khan and China. but do you think the andbugs and gunbugs are actually playing that up shouldn't they be doing that but are they doing yeah. that i don't know only when you told me just now i realized that there was the official version that panned and slammed them pretty hard but that should have been amplified that should have you know line to line verse to verse the channel should have analyzed it and said this is the official position of india why didn't they do that see what is the problem with the communications i i really don't know how to fix this part you know uh, it's a simple thing you can have press conferences like the way it happens in the united states have somebody you can just say positives only keep on saying positives if you can uh, of course you have to back it up with data that is where the problem is 
So you don't have a way to back it up with data. Therefore, you don't give press conferences. Just give a statement and then let it go. We did this. We did. Ground is not saying what you say that you will do. This is the problem, I think. Yeah. Uh, anybody else wants to? Oh, Doctor, you I go mean, ahead. That is, uh, uh, Ramesh. Yeah. No, you, you go ahead, Doctor Swami. These... I... Yeah. You said you wanted what? to say something. And if I have time, I'll say that. Okay. Um, uh, you mean you want me to conclude? Yes. Uh, no, not conclude. You said you had a few things to say based yeah, on what we say, And once say, you finish I, that, I, I will think... be good. If we have time, we'll go okay. over that because we have 1126. Right. I mean, no, have... let me say that the core issue, according to me, which should be addressed in a, in, a, in, a, in a session like this, is that number one, we have a Chinese occupying territory, which they originally themselves said is till a mutual settlement is reached on the disputes on the territory is a part of India. So we accepted, for example, that uh, Aksai Chin is uh, presently with, the, with China and stay with China till we come to a settlement. And this side, the Chinese said, we have no claims whatsoever on Ladakh. And so Ladakh was concerned. That's how the line of actual control was drawn. 1993. Mutually accepted, both. China violated that after 18 meetings of Mr. Modi with Yi Xi Jinping, one to one. And uh, one day they just walk in, don't tell you about it. And then we have a dispute uh, in uh, where we have to fight with bare hands. I mean, a rule was passed by our foreign ministry that we, our troops will not use uh, weapons because the Chinese say in, in that area we have an agreement that we will not come with weapons. So in Galwan, it was all fisticuffs and stone throwing. So now the Chinese are in 4,000, according to me, 4,000 square kilometers of Ladakh. And yesterday, a Ladakh former MLA gave a statement that even the grass, uh, the areas where we used to graze capital, uh, cattle, they have been taken over by China. It's there in, uh, if you go to uh, any of the websites, you will, you will get it. So, you had this problem. Two, Pakistan, Taliban are hostile to you. They have a, a, a bonding with China. And uh, Pakistan is an occupation of part of Kashmir. They have got infiltrators in India. They are trying to uh, light a fire in Punjab. And they have also been there. Was, and all your other neighbors are also in, uh, in uh, in uh, in disarray because they can't choose between you and China and uh, uh, right now uh, 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 all our bordering states are now bending towards China and uh, so in this context to have a discussion with the United States president and insisting on a special uh, dispensation for this because there were there was a, he was coming only for the UN and uh, if you wanted to meet one-to-one, uh, -one, well, you could have met him in the New York because Biden also came to New York for, to deliver a speech. So uh, you, uh, you did not raise this fundamental security question with the United States. And vaccine and all is fine, but you know, the, it doesn't have to be at the level of the heads of state or heads of government. Second is, when the Quad was formed, you please see the statement. They say that because of the primary threat for, to democracies from China, Quad is being formed. See the original statement. So if to Arvind to say that Quad had nothing to do with China, that's, uh, you know, not correct in view of the original objective. That has changed. Now we have reduced to environment and uh, vaccine. Quad is for environment. And they have formed another quad with the Australians and the United Kingdom, which will deal with security aspects of 
uh, Indo-Pacific, as if we don't have uh, any security concerns. Indo-Pacific means Indian Ocean and Pacific Ocean together have been put together as Indo-Pacific. So, and what happened is after the first Quad meeting, India then had a session with China on BRICS, on Indians, uh, uh, you know, or, or with the chairmanship of Mr. Modi. And Xi Jinping was there. They both exchanged compliments to with each other. Bonhomie was there. And subsequently, there was another of called SCO, when China and Pakistan were both present. Shanghai Cooperation Organization. And then you expect the United States to help you in China or in Pakistan. In fact, Pakistan is now has got a stranglehold on uh, because of this Haqqani group, which is now head, heading the three most important portfolios. Uh, and the Haqqani group is 100% Pakistani or at least pro-Pakistani. And uh, so the Americans decide what okay, now we have to deal with Afghanistan, then we'll deal with Pakistan. And I read out to you what, as the prime minister was meeting our, their, their president, what where Mr. Uh, foreign Minister of uh, Foreign Secretary uh, or the State Se uh, Secretary of State was doing. So, in this context, I am saying, what did you gain strategically? Nothing. You have made friends previously because there was some suspicion because you were with the um, uh, with uh, uh, with um, uh, Donald Trump, and so you have overcome it. The, the, we are not, I am sorry to say, that, Arvind, we are not looking for a marriage and, you know, to overcome or, uh, or to avoid a divorce. The issue is that we have a major strategic issue, uh, matter. Chinese are in occupying. Now there are 800 villages that Chinese have constructed on the, the Arunachal border. That's also a news item today. So, in, in all these respects, I think I have, in fact, taken it out and downloaded it. I've got it here somewhere. And so, um, I would say our relationship with the United States must be surely to fight China, drive them out, show that India is capable and India is capable. But we lack weapons. We lack modern weapons. If S-400 comes, the Americans are not only not going to come with you, but they're going to put sanctions on you. And uh, this is my prediction. I don't know. Um, but this is what I've been told by knowledgeable Americans, that the, uh, the sanctions notices are all ready. It will be issued within 24 hours. So we are not looking for uh, a popularity contest. That I was received here. I was given dinner here. I was given lunch there. We want India's security. And the India security means to fight China, Pakistan, and whoever is with them. And for that, we need to be equipped. And we should have that as a as an objective. You can't dilute it by meeting your people who have aggressed on your territory. After misleading you, after 18 meetings and making a fool of you, you, you can't forgive them. But we are not even speaking about them. Has one statement come either from Mr. Modi or from Mr. Rahul Gandhi condemning China for occupying our territory, which was mutually agreed is our territory? The answer is no. So it is in this context I would like to see Indo-US relationship. Either don't have it. Surrender to the Chinese, tell them what, take what you want. Surrender to the Pakistanis, say whatever part of Kashmir you want to take. Let us be in peace. Either you do that. Or pieces. Or put them to pieces. This is what I would say. Now you please react, Mr. Dr. Swami, Ramesh. Yeah, I had just said one reaction. So the first thing, when you said, when you come to the US, I... What does India have to offer, Dr. Swami, in exchange? Let's say if US wants you, you want all the weaponry, you want all of this. What does India back offer? India offers troops. 
where they are not able Anywhere to offer troops even in their own land. You are not Swami, they are not able to send their troops into their own land. No, that's a different matter. But you are we are uh, going to uh, places where the Americans have created a base for you, like Iraq or uh, uh, the, then Afghanistan. Hmm. It would have been very easy because we are yeah. there anyway, building uh, libraries and uh, universities yes. and uh, the parliament building and so on. And no, we have right four now. consulates all over Afghanistan. Yeah. Now, what does India have to offer now for US to help you? Listen, that is your problem because you have uh, now come down to a situation where you are in debt. And then you're asking you know, the bank, uh, you're asking question on behalf of the bank, what have you to offer if you want a new loan? <laughs> so if you want, I can think about that in another question. Mm. But the question is, first of all, is this your objective? That you want a strategic um, uh, alliance with the Americans? That would be the uh, uh, first question to be answered. Then only I can get into this question, what you can offer? There is no doubt a very strong opinion in the United States that we need a counter to China and only India has the manpower to provide that counter. We've, and we did not take that opportunity. And we have not. And even today we say, okay, we'll fight China for you. If you want us to, to defend uh, Taiwan, we are ready to send troops. You want us to fight for uh, um, uh, any other part where the uh, uh, forces are required, we are happy. But you supply the capital equipment for that. I think Why are you having S-400 when the Americans saying we will put sanctions on you? They have privately communicated it. We are not taking it seriously. I think it, this visit was a huge opportunity lost, Dr. Swami. That's yeah, you may have lost it, but then you can't, you know, fold up and say now it's all over. We are we are going to go back to sleep. You have to find correctives, and the correctives is by telling the Americans we are ready to condemn, uh, you know, fight uh, on your behalf or on your in your interests with China, provided you fight and help us. Uh, uh, you know, to evict the Chinese out of our territory. Or if you want to be goody goody with everybody, that you are welcome here, you're welcome there, you know, like uh, this American visit. Uh, you are be to, you can even have a visit to uh, Beijing. Tomorrow, BRICS bank, uh, BRICS uh, uh, meeting takes place in uh, China. I'm sure uh, Modi is going to go there to attend. Okay, uh, Arvindji. Anyone else wants to say anything? Jagdish ji, Jagdish ji had a point. Yeah, go ahead. No, no, my point, my point is very clear. When India is not ready to name the aggressors, what yeah. do you expect from other countries to come to your help? That's right. If you are if you are in trouble or somebody is troubling you, if you are not ready to name that troublemaker. <laughs> then why would other countries want to come to help you? You are even feeling shy to name them as aggressors. <laughs> it's a very strange situation. And you, you talk here, koi aya nahi, koi gaya nahi, and all those type of things. And uh, every effort is made to put in you, a control. Not team. only not name them, but you have sat with them in conferences. For 18 meetings and continue to do so. No, even no, now. even now, even now, BRICS. Now, now yes. SEO. So it's so, a very situation. So how would some foreign country even look at you? Uh, with respect. With respect. Yeah. You have to demonstrate now that you mean, you mean that you will put, you know, as the Americans say, put your money where your mouth is. Ayer, Swami, I have a question to you. Just uh, let me ask Ayer, and then I come to you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Doctor Swami, um, I think Ramesh really hit the nail on the head. What does America, What does India have to offer? The boots yeah. on the ground. You could have just put five thousand troops because at that point, for the last yeah. six years, sir. Only 2,500 American troops American were, troops were there. Yeah. Only 2,500. And, so and what, we were training Afghan troops also. 
Yeah, so one for one replacement, saying that you phase it down, we keep that thing, and the the contractors can continue to run. India could be could have been sitting in that Bagram Air Base today, with a view of what is going on, and they they would have effectively stopped Pakistan on its track. So what I am afraid the way this is going to play out is China is going to outsource the laying of the oil pipeline between Iran and China to Pakistan. They will say. You have to create a, a pipeline which is crude, and then another gas line, yeah. and you will have to put a road along that thing, a train track along that thing, and create a 25-kilometer buffer zone on either side of this. So no Afghan can come even close to that. This is the kind of plan that Pakistan, uh, China usually does when they do something like this. And this entire thing is going to be outsourced to Pakistan. I don't know if they are going to be able to execute on this or not because they couldn't do it in about, CPEC. But the question is, let's worry about what we want to do to counter all that. What are we going to do, sir? We are going to do nothing. We <laughs> lost the opportunity in 2016. Let's ask Arvin because he's in a defense. Yeah, mode. no, Dr. Sami, I'm, uh, I'm asking a question to you. And yes. uh, this issue of uh, India not naming China as an aggressor. You yes. have been raising this for maybe more than six months now. And consistently. One year. Uh, and there are some okay, sections. There are some sections in the media which very silently refer to this here and there, but they also cannot come out because we know what media is in India. Now I'm okay, asking. Right, right. They, they, they know what will happen to them uh, in yeah, terms correct. of their financial standing in correct. as a newspaper correct. or yeah, as there a. There may be ED no? rates and IT rates and so on. Yeah, so that's forth. right. Some UP media has seen this. Or it can be acquired also, right, Arvindji? Uh, my question to you is be specific. Why do you think the government of India or your party is not doing it? Is it because of UP elections? That if we name China as aggressor and no action is taken against China and we get a bad name, we will lose UP? Is it you, only because of UP you, or because you, of internal you mean, the, you mean the people of Uttar Pradesh do not know that uh, China is already there and Uttar they are not taking any action? Uttar Pradesh is sir. Uttar Pradesh huh? is not Sima. Sima lagi hai, Uttar Pradesh ki Sima. That's right. I'm, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. You, you think that Chamoli is an area which uh, uh, is easy access. You know, and they have, in fact, they encouraged Nepal to lay claim to Lipu Lake. Which yes. is the way I crossed into when I went walking to, to Kailash Mansar over. Yeah. So anyway, the, the issue is this. Uh, listen, uh, I know that the India government doesn't want to name. Why they don't want to name? How can I say this on this program? Because I have no proof, uh, concrete proof to show. And what I would say will sound astounding. It will be all over the media and so on. The issue, guys, is that there is a definite compulsion in this country that the network of the Chinese and the Russians, both. Because Russia is a junior partner of China. Please understand that. I've seen lots of in Twitter people talking about our friendship with Russia. This is not Soviet Union, number one. It's not the old communist country which had a dispute with China on the, who is the leader of the communist world. This is a pure dictatorship in the most raw terms. And they are totally surrendered to China. Because after the Americans put their sanctions, they had borrowed from China, they are not able to pay back. Sri Lanka is in the same position, although Rajapaksha is struggling to see whether India would come and you know, be an alternative in terms of in financial terms. And we are not doing it because uh, our two bureaucrats, Mr. Jay Shankar and uh, Mr. Doval, they struck around like uh, commissars when they go to Sri Lanka and like pussycats when they go to United States. So I think the question when you ask is what can India do? India can tell the United States you and I have a common objective to check China. You, you may do it in different language. We'll do it in different language. But if there's ever a threat to Taiwan, if there's ever a threat to any other part, Australia or Japan, we, our troops will be available. But you modernize our armed forces. 
and help us to sit with Indonesia and block the Malacca Strait whenever a Chinese ship comes. You know that Malacca Strait is, um, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, I think a, a, as big as Suez Canal in width. And on one side is uh, uh, okay. Indonesia, the other side is our Amdaman uh, uh, in the Kar Nicobar. And, and uh, therefore, if we are here and they are there, no Chinese ship can go through. So, therefore, let's, you see, I've uh, been and I've been reminded just now, the Panchatantra had a beautiful story about a bat. Which, like Modi went to with the China on uh, bricks, and then <laughs> went to America. In the, the bat told the rats, uh, the animals that see, I look like a rat, and I am part of the animal world. So, in your war, which was developing between the uh, war, the animals and the birds, I am uh, with you because of the fact that I'm an animal. And they went and told the same thing to the birds. And then didn't turn up for the war. But then uh, halfway through the war, these two made up, had a, a peace treaty. And then they said, where is the bat? And then they exchanged notes. So both went hunting for the bat. And that's why bat never comes out during daylight. And is always hanging upside down to confuse everybody. So we are like the bat of Panchatantra. We are here, we are there, and nowhere. And let's be very blunt. People were very critical of anyone who told more uh, Jawaharlal Nehru, you are doing a wrong thing with China. And by the way, Chinese, I'm never, I'm not, I'm not uh, uh, rabidly anti-Chinese. I've been their friends. I still would like to be their friends. They are finest people as individual citizens. They are cultured like us. They have a tradition like us. They, you know, their family system is like us. I would like to be friends with them, but if you have come stealthily and taken our territory, which we have mutually agreed is my territory, then you have betrayed me. Then we have to fight. And you can't do it by talking, because all the time we have been talking, they have been increasing their presence in India. Yes, uh, anyone wants to uh, add anything? Otherwise, uh, yeah, we're done, Dr. Swami. Yeah, 11.50, yeah. 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 20, 20 minutes over. Yeah, go ahead. Arvindji. We, uh, we have already exhausted uh, about uh, 75 minutes. Uh, Arvindji, you are concluding? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. or Jagdish is concluding. No, anyway, yeah, Arvind, Arvind. either of you. Yes. Huh? Uh, Indo US Arvind. relationship. Arvind, okay. Uh -huh. It is such an uh, issue, uh, such an issue which can never be actually defined. Uh, in one dimension or the other, so many different dimensions there. We have four seasons in a year, and uh, the U.S. Uh, response to India varies with every season. And how many seasons you have to see like this? That every few months, daily hot, blow, hot, blow, cold relationship between India and I have already said one step forward, one step backward. This will continue. More importantly, what is to be seen in the very near future is what Dr. Subramanian Swami has been warning. And that warning is what happens when S-400 deal is arrives. When it happens, how the U.S. is going to behave? Few minutes back, he has said, maybe there will be sanctions. But that India has to be prepared in advance. Whatever response U.S. will show, when the Russians deliver S-400 to us, when India names China, whenever it happens, if India names China as an aggressor, will US be willing to cooperate with India to fight China, Afghanistan, and Pakistan nexus? That means, will India and US will be an axis, will form an axis in order to respond to these three. That is yet to be seen, and that is in the uh, future uh, to be observed. Thank you, Dr. Swami, for giving us your views. Thank you, Mr. Sri Ayer. You have provided a different perspective today. Uh, you being an Indian and being in the US for a number of years, 
you have been observing uh, the, which way the wind is blowing between India and US and uh, our co-host Ramesh Swami. Thank you very much. For, I think this uh, 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 rich content provided by you three will be liked by our viewers and they will be benefited by these uh, different uh, points of view which you have uh, put forward. Thank you, Jagdish. Thanks to the technical team led by Ashish Shetty, Ishwar Ayer, Gadgi Rakesh, Tejas, Swaminathan, Vishal Mehta. We will be meeting again next Sunday, 8 p.m. Words of Wisdom, Gyan Ganga with a new issue with Dr. Subramani Swami and with a new guest. Thank you very much. Till then, Namaskar. Jai. Jai Hind. Dhanyavad.